Well, any adventure has to start with some good nutrition. Nothing light about this fare. I mean, when you dive into this food, you better be ready to hit the trail because you're going to need to burn off some energy. Here's one of the fellows that <laughs> didn't hit the trail. That'll tell you a little about the food. As the camp was busy preparing the horses, I decided to hike up for a vantage point of the entire setting. It's wonderful to look over a high mountain horse camp. This Wrangler operation has been here since the turn of the century. I brought my paints to a small overhang of rock and decided to set up and make a sketch of the entire camp. For this painting, I decided to put an undercoat of a raw umber tone. I felt that warm reddish brown would lend a nice undertone to the entire painting, giving it that rustic Old West look. The entire painting is executed in bristle brushes. This creates a more defined brush stroke. It also requires a lot of skill to get detail out of those bigger brushes. I think artists spend many years learning to control their brushwork, but once you get it, you feel confidence you can do just about anything with a brush. I'm left-handed, so as I work, I'm always glancing to the right at the subject. This is comfortable in that I don't have to look over my brush hand. I start out blocking in the form. After that comes detail. The initial sketch looks very abstract, but I can see on my panel where everything is. As I continue working, I put the sky in first to set the mood for the painting. That becomes a color statement that helps me balance all the other colors. I paint the foliage with a lot of different color, not just green. I bring in warm tones, orange tones, even some purple tones. Plein air painting is the great challenge for an artist because there is no hiding from the truth. You look out at a subject and you have to capture it quickly. There's no way to hide behind technique or mood or subject matter. It's just a few brush strokes capturing what you see. To me, a plein air painting is a lot more memorable than a photograph. A photograph captures all the hard edges of life. A plein air painting is nostalgic. It's a little world that you can enter into and somehow your imagination goes to work. One of the keys to plein air painting is knowing how much detail to include. Too much detail and you end up rendering. Too little and it looks abstract and loses the sense of place. I try to use broad strokes, quickly applied, but with small details added in a more patient way. Gradually the painting takes shape. I indicated the horses very quickly, just enough so you could tell it's a horse. There's nothing like looking over a corral and watching horses at play. I always feel peaceful when I look at horses or other farm animals. It seems as though their life is patient and very tranquil. When you look at the brushwork of this painting, you'll see very quickly that a lot of it was very thickly applied paint. That's part of the fun of plein air painting. We work our horses pretty hard, but the first preparation is setting up the pack. The trail ride starts with a well-packed horse. We've learned over the years that you need to have everything necessary for the trail with you so that you can have a good ride and get back home safe. I really enjoy the camaraderie of all the wranglers who work with us as we prepare for the trail. Even the trail boss has to inspect his mount, making sure everything is ready. I brought paints with me. This drew the attention of some of the locals. Turns out they're collectors. I'm amazed where I run into people who have seen my work. My paints are on the right side of my mount, and on the left I have other essentials. I've done a lot of riding, especially in mountain terrain, but when I got on this trail, I knew it was not for the novice horseman. When you're going down a steep grade on horseback, there's something thrilling about stepping 
foot by foot, step by step, down a slippery, rocky slope. One of the real thrills was riding across this bridge, originally intended as a Packers bridge to get back to the distant canyons of the Sierra. I don't know how old the bridge was, but as you're going across it on a horse, you begin to say your prayers that it's still in good shape. Coming down off the mountain, we ran into a, some beautiful meadow areas. The river that was there was so paintable, I began to think to myself, a perfect spot to set up my easel. Traveling through the high Sierras makes you feel like you've stepped back into time to an earlier period, maybe before any civilization existed in this area. In fact, the Sierras are such a vast mountain range that many of the eastern states would fit just in the Sierras, let alone the other parts of California. So you can ride for miles and miles and never see any sign of civilization. My brother, Patrick, became known as Tex on the trip. He lives in Texas now and runs one of our galleries. The interesting thing about old Tex, he'd never been on a horse before. So for him, crossing a river, fording a stream, doing high difficulty mountain riding was certainly a thrill. He kept right up with us though. Across the river. Leading a pack horse across a raging river is one of the great experiences in life. If you've never done it, be forewarned you are gonna get wet. We didn't mind getting wet. The sun was out during the trip. And as we came up over some of the vistas, the warmth would just make your heart leap. We would look for miles into the distance and envision what it would be like to camp in this wilderness setting. The mountain lakes are beautiful, many of them completely untouched by man. You could pull out a fishing pole and see what you could find, but I think we'll keep riding the trail. The vista of the mountain lake was so inspiring we couldn't help but take a rest stop. This gave us a chance to lay some plans for the trail. We decided we wanted to keep pushing further back into the wilderness. The trail boss knew the territory pretty well and insisted that the further we go back, the prettier it gets. I hiked up to a ridge and looked around. I could see that he was right. Ahead of us lay some incredible terrain that few people ever see. I took my camera out to the gorge. Sometimes it's quicker to snap a photo than it is to do a sketch. I like to do both whenever possible. But when you're on the trail, speed is of the essence. So I brought my camera with me and documented everything we saw. Some of this material will end up in future paintings. It's a long way down. So when you come to the edge, you better make sure you have a good footing. This river is icy cold. It's full of water from the snow melt up above. We knew that it would be refreshing to jump in, but it was time to head on to the first painting location. We tethered the horses and got ready for a visit to the beautiful meadow. I decided to get my paints out and see what I could come up with. It looked like a landscape from heaven, a perfect combination of trees, a valley, a river, and mountains beyond. It's so typical of the kind of valley you find in the High Sierra, where you've got the aspen groves that flicker, you've got all these kind of cottonwood trees and other trees that will gather in this moist area down here in this river bottom. So my hope is that somewhere in here, as I work on location, this 
this area will come through in the final painting. But today I'm going to do a sketch. I'm going to do actually a plein air work where I set, I'm going to set my easel up right here. Perfect day for it. And the shadows should get better. The light will begin to grow dim as the sun goes down a little bit. We've got a couple good hours of shadows and light uh, to work with. My painting setup comes with me everywhere I go. It weighs about 45 pounds, so I can pack it pretty much anywhere on my own back. This time I was glad we had a pack horse. The shadows had come over the mountain, and I was in the perfect lighting for working on my painting. Not too bright and not too dark. A good even light that allowed me to try to capture that glow of sunset. Picture the wonderful serenity of sitting in a mountain setting like this and working on a painting. I know many people who might hear me describe this experience are not themselves artists. But even if you're not an artist, perhaps you might take a chance to go sit in the wilderness and just soak it all in. I think people pass too quickly through the wilderness, never taking time to be still in the presence of God's creation. That's why I love painting outdoors. It gives me a chance to slow down and really soak in the beauty. One of the most satisfying things in nature is running water. And I love the sound of a stream as it goes by. I had to work quickly to capture the effect of light. And the entire painting from start to finish took just a little over an hour. I refined the painting back in the studio to add a little bit more detail. But the great joy of Impressionist plein air painting is the spontaneity that comes from working on location. I heard a great painter tell me one time, when you paint outdoors, you don't paint, it paints. I've set up my easel in many locations, but this was clearly one of the most dramatic. The light was beginning to fade, so I knew I had to capture it before it changed too much. I saw the light hit the top of the trees and the top of the mountain, and then gradually the trees began to go into shadow. I love the effect of transient light, especially on a mountain range. It makes me realize how good God is to give us such a beautiful world to live in. As I worked on the painting, the rest of our compadres were relaxing around camp. It had been a long trail day, and I think everyone was a little wore out. One nice thing about being in the woods, nobody cares if you get paint on your clothes. I told my wife when we left that anything I was wearing would probably be thrown away by the time I got back. In fact, in one of our campfires, we had a ritual campfire clothing burning contest. Some of the clothes needed to be burned. There was no way to take them home. As an artist, I love light when it begins to fade in the afternoon. That's when the shadows get long and the color gets more brilliant. All of a sudden, nature seems to just glow with a new richness. It was fun to paint the water of the river because it began to glow with the reflection of the sky as the afternoon light came down. Well, you can see that the light changed quite a bit since when we started. What I try to do in the painting is capture not just the light that is when I start, but also some of the lighting effects that I liked as we went through uh, the period of transition as the evening came on. Um, so that's an advantage, I suppose, that uh, artists have. We can take different lighting and bring it into focus into the painting. I like the light of the river as it picks up the sky. I like the sense of light hitting the tops of the trees then fading down and of course distant areas of light that silhouette our little cow here that you can see as a detail and yet the foreground is in shadow. I like it. I like the color scheme. I like the uh, combination of lighting effects that began to occur out here as I worked. I love creating light through brushwork, and throughout the painting, I tried to capture that sense of cool shadows and warm light. We found exciting settings that I couldn't resist. I wanted to stop my horse several times and set up my easel, 
the scenery just kept getting more beautiful. We came upon this wonderful waterfall that went back into the forest, and I decided this would be a perfect subject to record. Someone had built a bridge over the falls, and I decided if I could find a place to set up near the bridge, perhaps I would have some shelter from the bright sunlight. I took my paints down into the brush and scouted around. I wanted to capture not just the waterfall, but a sense of the light pouring through the forest, so I had to find the perfect vantage point. I knew this painting would take a, an hour or two to finish because of the detail. I was going to work quickly and try to capture it with as much economy of brushstroke as I could. What a spectacular setting. As I went to work, the camp was preparing for another rest session. I began to notice something. One good thing about being an artist, it keeps you awake. I think my brother could have used something to do occasionally. He's a writer, and writers sometimes know how to daydream. Daydreaming, by the way, is another word for napping. I had pure water with me from the mountain streams. The perfect thing to wet your whistle as you set to work. This painting was going to be a study in contrast. You had the fast moving stream, which was white and foamy, and the darkness of the forest interior. This kind of contrast is what makes a painting come to life. The water was very cooling. There was a breeze that rose up off it that kept me uh, comfortable in the hot sun. As I continued working, I again realized that painting moving water is one of the most challenging subjects. You have to capture quick glimpses of the water and try to render that, because the form is constantly changing. I love the sense of aqua green colors that come in the undersides of a stream. The whiteness of the foam is beautifully set off by that lovely green color. I was nearing the end of my painting. It was time to begin to indicate the foliage of the tallest trees. These provide a counterpoint to the detail below of rocks and a sense of escape into the distance. The key to this subject was not to make it appear too up close. There had to be a sense of distant space as well. This is called atmospheric perspective. It gives you a sense that the world is bigger than just the picture plane you're seeing. I love to always suggest in my paintings that you could enter into them and find an entire world laying just around the corner. The rush of water, the light pouring through the trees, the distant mountains, and the blue sky overhead. What could be a more beautiful setting to discover as you ride into the wilderness? There was a peak around there that was one of the highest mountains in the local range. It would require a lot of riding above treeline. 
heavy brush in there, but I think we can get through. You're uh, going to have a little better look if you go back just a little further. Um, yeah. There's some points back there where your vision will be up by trees. And blah, okay. Blah, blah, blah. Well, but you wouldn't believe what's, where these trees are growing, there's a big flat pad. And um, there's some brush getting to it. But I think if we go back down to that fork in the trail. The mountain we were about to climb on horseback is one that few people had ever been on top of. As a result, there was no set trail. It didn't look as though anyone had been here in years. As we neared the summit, I decided it was a good time to set up and paint. This has got to be one of the most awe-inspiring vistas anyone has ever seen. The day couldn't have been better. Little bits of cloud beginning to cling to the mountain peaks. The dappling of sunlight and shadow as the clouds passed overhead. And the panoramic beauty of the high Sierras laid out in front of me like some grand landscape painting. This is why I'm an artist. Because when I explore, I can capture what I see and share it with others. Whatever talent God may have given me needs to be used, I believe, to help give people a message of this beautiful world that we live in. There is a lot of ugliness in the world, I suppose. You read about it every day in the newspapers, but there's a lot of beauty as well. And as I sat on that mountain, I felt a million miles away from any ugliness. The painter's craft is really all about taking a brush and pushing pigment around on a canvas. There's no real magic to it. It's something anyone could probably learn to do in time. But to do it in a way that captures a world and ignites the imagination, that is something that every artist strives for. I think a painting can not just capture the physical beauty of a setting, but it can also suggest something of the emotion as well. In that sense, art comes more from the heart than from the hand. In the same way, I suppose anyone could learn to play a guitar, but then every now and then, you hear someone play a song and it can touch your heart. That's my goal as an artist. I may not always achieve it, but I like trying to capture paintings that really bring an emotion to life. I suppose part of me has the heart of an impressionist. Impressionism is all about capturing light on canvas quickly. The French impressionists used to paint outdoors all the time. In this century, it seems like few artists do. To me, plein air painting is the chance to capture a moment on canvas. Plein air painting is very different than studio painting in the sense that it is less detailed and more spontaneous. But it's more than that. A plein air painting captures a moment in time, whereas a studio painting is more an expression of an imaginative world, a world within an artist. At least in my case, I like to paint both because to me the thrill of vigorous brush strokes on canvas is probably akin to the thrill of flying a jet fighter plane. It's, it's a sense of moving quickly and testing your own reflexes. As I completed my final plein air painting, I knew it was time to pack the horses and head back. I began to get nostalgic about all the beauty that surrounded us. I would probably miss this setting, miss these mountains, once I got back into my studio. And yet, it's so easy while you're there on location to ignore all the beauty that passes by you. As I sat and painted, I made a deliberate study of every detail. I wanted to register this vista, this mountain range on my mind. I knew future paintings would be influenced by this setting. We packed up the horses and made ready.
The camp had been one of many camps we had set up. It had been a long ride, a long trip, a long journey. It was more than a journey on horseback. It was a journey of friends who maybe learned a little more about each other in the process. I think the great thing about going to the high country is that you don't just discover yourself, you discover God. <laughs>